Complete yourself first. You complete me. This has to be one of the most famous lines from a movie. If you've ever watched Jerry Maguire, you will know the scene I'm talking about, where Tom Cruise attempts to woo Renee Zellweger back to into his life with an iconic speech professing that without her, he is incomplete. And, of course, he does so successfully, melting, I'm quite sure, millions of women's hearts and further luring them into the false romantic notion that when someone truly loves you, they can't be a whole person without you. Don't get me wrong, I love the movie, and I was moved by that scene, but I have seen the pain of many women who have bought into the fantasy of finding a man to be their other half. Some spend their lives in search of the one, and until they do, they're never quite fulfilled or happy. Others find themselves with what they thought was that man for about six months, or a few years only to end up feeling more lonely, disappointed, less fulfilled and at a loss as to why their man isn't bringing them the completion they'd hoped for. I have had my own experience of this and the irony is that the more I wanted that void to be filled by one person, the more elusive it became. The very thing I thought would bring me what I wanted brought me the most pain because I was operating from a place of weakness rather than from a place of strength. You see, the weight of putting all or too many of your needs on one person is that it's just too heavy a burden for them to bear. It becomes stifling, stressful and a major turn off. Eventually, I realized what, you complete me, actually means, it is that only you have the power to meet my unmet needs. And those needs are the needs of the heart, affection, attention, appreciation, and acceptance. As a society, we understand that our basic human needs are food, water, shelter, and clothing, qualifying them as things we need to survive. However, we do not address the needs of our heart as equally essential components to our well-being. It is why when we see that those needs might not be met at all, a kind of desperation kicks in because it feels like our survival is on the line. I've noticed it is pretty common to hear a woman being called too needy and very often she'll be told to just stop being that way. In my opinion, the worst thing she could do is abandon her needs altogether. What I say is that she needs to find a multitude of other avenues to have the needs of her heart met so that when she comes to her relationship, she is overflowing rather than undernourished and looking to be filled. In my own life, I've found this can be anything from making sure I am consistently expressing and sharing my gifts, spending time with girlfriends, making time to do what I love, knowing what feeds my soul and taking action to make it a priority. The dynamics begin to shift to what can I bring to my relationship rather than what can I get and you can imagine being on the receiving end of that is so much more appealing. It is a delicate dance between not being so independent that there's no room for your partner to give and be there for you as well as not being so dependent that he feels bound and responsible for your happiness. I believe when we come to our relationships as two holes looking to give rather than two halves wanting to take, it creates a much more solid foundation for love to flow freely and abundantly.